Are the Lakers big three with the signing of Kawhi Leonard in 2019 the title favorites? Well in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how they fit together on the court, forming one of the best trios ever, but possibly the greatest team of all time. Welcome back to Journey of a Ballaholic, the best talk show for basketball addicts. I'm your host, General Hannibal X. Now, if you're looking for passionate and in-depth analysis on the hottest NBA and college basketball topics, then look no further. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, tap that notification bell so that you'll be updated every time a new episode drops, which is every Monday and Friday at 6 p.m. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. But before we do, go ahead down in the comment section, let me know exactly who you think the top trio of all time is in your opinion. Okay, I, I think it's pretty much widely known at this point that Kawhi Leonard is probably one of the most mysterious free agents of all time. I mean, this is a guy who very rarely says anything, and when he does, he's a man of few words. So let's just go off the things that we actually know about the situation. Well, we know that the Lakers cleared $32 million in cap space. We also know that the Lakers were one of the few teams that got an in-person meeting with Kawhi Leonard. We also know that Kawhi Leonard has asked for Jeannie Buss and Magic Johnson to be in the meeting directly, right? Well, what else do we know? We know that when Kawhi Leonard was with the San Antonio Spurs, Kawhi Leonard asked to be traded and he wanted to go home to LA. So let's just stop and think hypothetically here. What if Kawhi Leonard joined up with LeBron James and Anthony Davis? To me, not only is that the greatest trio in today's game, that could potentially be the greatest trio ever. Let's look at some of the greatest trios of all time. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's go back to the 60s, where the Celtics had a great trio with Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, and John Havlicek, AKA Hondo. What about the Lakers' first big three with Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, and even Jerry West, Mr. Clutch, AKA the Logo? Let's fast forward to the 80s because the Celtics and the Lakers also had great trios in that decade. Well, the Celtics had Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish. Or what about Showtime Lakers, Magic, Kareem, and Worthy? You could fast forward to the 90s where the Bulls had the Jordan era with Michael, Scotty, and Rodman. Even fast forward past that to the newer age big threes. Boston came back again with another one with Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. What about some of the more modern big threes? How about the Miami Heat, as they called them, the Heatles, with LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade? Or how about the most recent big three, where you're looking at the Golden State Warrior dynasty with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and Klay Thompson? So how would this trio stack up against those all-time greats? Well, first, let's look at how they actually play together on the court. See, I see this Laker team as a combo. A combo of the Showtime Lakers on offense and the 90s Bulls team on defense. I'm talking about absolutely smothering. Offensively, the Lakers would be able to thrive in transition, which would be sparked by getting stops on the defensive end first. Now listen, if you're gonna talk defense, you gotta start with the two-time defensive player of the year, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi is the absolute best two-way player in the game and his on-ball defense is legendary, reminiscent of Scottie Pippen. But the ability to put pressure on the ball, knowing he would have help behind him, now that's what's scary. And that's where Anthony Davis comes in. As one of the elite rim protectors in the game, his ability to get a stop and get the offense going off to the races is very impressive. I mean, we gotta remember this. Anthony Davis has that ability to steal the ball and take it himself coast to coast, not needing to find a guard because he was a 6'4 guard in high school. Once the Lakers actually do get a missed shot, that's where LeBron and Kawhi Leonard would thrive on the break like Magic and Worthy did for Showtime. LeBron is like a freight train. When he's coming down here with the ball, you better get out of his way. His ability to take it all the way to the basket or be able to kick it ahead to that open man on the fast break, it's special, man. I mean, we're talking about it's generational. But see, it's the half-court offense. That's where LeBron will work his magic. 
like Magic. Imagine a pick and roll game between LeBron and Davis. It would be the most unstoppable play in today's game. LeBron's ability to make those pocket passes and those step around rap passes is unique. But see, it's that vertical threat that Anthony Davis brings that's what makes this play unguardable. I mean, look at that. How do you defend somebody who's that long, that athletic, and that unstoppable? But see, what's unique is their ability to invert the play, where you can actually run the pick and roll and let Davis be the passer. You see, Kawhi Leonard, he's very good at being able to set his man up, make a backdoor cut, find the open spot. I mean, listen, there's nothing this, this trio would not be able to do together. They all can handle the ball. They can shoot. They can, they can literally do it all. And at the end of games, when it's crunch time, if the games are close with this team, when you need to have that closer, we know without a shadow of a doubt, Kawhi Leonard is that closer. I think that's where Kawhi Leonard would be the cream that would rise to the top. Now, I can't talk about this big three and not mention the fourth wheel, Kyle Kuzma. His ability as a floor spacer is perfect around this big three. I mean, Kyle Kuzma is that guy who doesn't need the ball in his hand to be able to get his offense. He could play off the ball, make backdoor cuts, find open spaces to be able to score efficiently to be able to give that added assistance as the fourth wheel. I mean, his ability to run a transition, to spread the floor, is exactly what they need. So listen, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for taking this hypothetical walk down a Lake of Dream scenario with me. I mean, but at the end of the day, Kawhi Leonard has to decide where he wants to play. Other people have to decide where they're going to go. But as of right now, we know Kimball Walker, he's going to the Boston Celtics. We know Kyrie Irving is going to the Brooklyn Nets. So who's going to be next? Well, we got to wait and see. So in the next video, we're going to be discussing the top NBA stars that need to be traded this offseason so that they can get out of their current situation. As always, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, tap that like button, hit that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the journey of a ball of Holland.